Hello again, brothers and sisters. I wanted to do a quick video update, a, a quick prophetic update, actually. Uh, I wanted to speak to us uh, about um, uh, false prophets. I wanted to read a little excerpt about Pope Francis, but I also wanted to uh, spend a few minutes on the prosperity gospel and how I believe this is leading many, many of our precious brothers and sisters astray. Uh, I truly believe that... Uh, like Jesus said, that all those the Father gives me, I will lose none, but will raise him up at the last day. That Jesus, that once you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, it says you are sealed until the day of redemption. So I'm not saying that if you get sidetracked by a false prophet, uh, a, a false gospel, but you've truly um, uh, been born again of God's Spirit, His Spirit lives in you, and you've been blood-bought by the grace of God, it does not mean that you're going to slip through Jesus' fingers. I don't believe that. I believe that when you are His, you're His eternally. And I know many may disagree with me on this. Uh, you didn't do anything to save yourself, and you can't do anything to maintain that. Uh, we are to walk and ask the Lord to continue to help us uh, daily to live according to his will. But even the Apostle Paul struggled uh, in the book of Romans and said the very thing he didn't want to do, uh, he, that he kept on doing. And who will save me from this body of death? None other but the Lord Jesus Christ. But getting back to my point, there are many false teachers out there, and one of the greatest teachings and, and uh, destructive heresies out there is this prosperity gospel. When Jesus walked this world, he never taught his followers and his disciples that life is going to be good. This is your best life now. As a matter of fact, he taught the opposite. All through scripture, uh, the Father tells us that he chooses us in the furnace of affliction. The scripture says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Jesus himself, who is God, reminded us in the scriptures that in this world, in this life, right now, in this age, you will have trials and tribulations. Paul reminded us all who would live a godly life in Christ Jesus will face persecution. Uh, Paul talked about the hardships that he went through uh, in order to enter the kingdom of God. Uh, the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation are laden with reminders that for the righteous, those who are born again, those who are living uh, in the Holy Spirit, that you will face trials and tribulations, that you, this is not our best life now. The best is yet to come. Uh, Jesus will come back and we'll be one with him forever. That is when we will have our best life. Right now, though, we're to walk with Jesus and fellowship with him in his sufferings. Never did Jesus say that to be a co-heir with him meant all the blessings and all the good things and all the, the fluff and, and the violins and roses. He never said that. That's all we tend to think about. Uh, the, the, the glory, the blessing, the gifts. We also have to be willing to suffer with Christ. The scripture says that if we're willing to suffer with him, we will also be glorified with him. These prosperity gospel teachers are all about the flesh, pleasing yourself. Uh, Joel Osteen has books out called, you know, uh, The Power of I Am, Your Best Life Now. Uh, Joyce Meyer, who I've never really touched on very much, uh, I have a few quotes from her that I'm going to read you that are very, very subtle, uh, and if you don't really ask the Holy Spirit for discernment, it's easy to miss. But let me uh, pull out a few um, statements. This is actually from, of all things, the Huff, the Huff Post, the Huffington Post. It says, the false promise of the prosperity gospel. And uh, this is actually coming from the Huffington Post. And it features Joel Austin on the front, but it also quotes Joyce Meyer as well in this article. Uh, it says here in this article uh, written by Pastor Rick Henderson. So he's a pastor and he's a blogger. Uh, so Pastor Rick Henderson makes these comments. I have been preaching for 20 years. Yesterday I did something that I have never done before in a sermon. I publicly called out false teachers and named them by name. I said, if you listen to Joel Osteen and Joyce Meyer, if you take what they teach seriously, it will not be good for you. It will be detrimental to your long-term growth as a follower of Jesus Christ. I used to think that their error was so blatantly obvious that they could just be ignored. I was wrong. They are massively growing in popularity in the evangelical world and are seen as credible and helpful. Now, let me stop there. Remember, this is just a reminder. Jesus said that false prophets will be loved by the world. If you belong to the world, Jesus said, the world will love you as its own. The prophets that truly spoke for the Lord and stood only on his word were the ones that were shunned, stoned, killed, uh, imprisoned, that were constantly persecuted or being chased down or run out of towns. Jesus himself suffered that. Uh, all who would live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. To me, one of the signs of a false teacher is that the world, the secular world, will love you. 
That's something to think about. And this is the point that this pastor is making here. Uh, he said here, um, the dangers of the prosperity gospel. Uh, and then he goes on to Joyce Meyer. When I first heard her tell her story, I was deeply moved and impressed. She is an amazing example of overcoming hurts and abuse. She will forever have my admiration and respect in that regard. Uh, but she teaches that Jesus literally stopped being the son of God on the cross. And I'm going to quote Joyce Meyer here. He, she said, he could have helped himself up until the point where he said, I commend my spirit into your hands. At that point, he couldn't do anything for himself anymore. He had become sin. He was no longer the son of God. He was sin. Now, this is a quote from Joyce Meyer. She teaches that Jesus went to hell and became the first born again man. Now, let me stop here for a second. This is what uh, I believe that, um, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons teach that Jesus when they say that he was the firstborn from the dead, they take it that he was a created being, uh, that he was created and not eternally God. So that this almost follows along that same mindset. She said here in quotes, Joyce says, do you know something? The minute that blood sacrifice was accepted, Jesus was the first human being that was ever born again. Now that was real. It happened when he was in hell. She teaches that Jesus paid for our sins in hell. She says there is no hope of anyone going to heaven unless they believe this truth I am presenting. You cannot go to heaven unless you believe with all your heart that Jesus took your place in hell. She teaches that the words have power, and you can release the power of heaven through your words. See, that's another thing that Joel Osteen preaches on as well, the power of I am. You simply confess that you are and uh, proclaim it, name it and proclaim it. Uh, only God has that right to command something with the words of his mouth. She teaches that you need special revelation from God to understand what she teaches because it is not contained in the Bible. She says the Bible can't even find any way to explain this. Not really. That's why you've got to get it by revelation. There are no words to explain what I'm telling you. I've got to just trust God that he's putting it into your spirit like he put it into mine. Hmm. Uh, she teaches that she is no longer a sinner. Uh, and he goes on here, unfortunately, I could continue with examples of her utter misuse of scripture, false teaching, and blatant heresy. In America, Christians have an embarrassment of riches. We can buy more books, download more podcasts, and tune into more helpful teachers than anyone else on the planet. The lies that she teaches are, are easily lost in the hum of all the great teachers we hear, but it is not the case in the third world. And again, I, I think I've, I've spoken on this myself before. Uh, you know, I'm a post-tribulation believer, uh, and I believe that the American church, the Western church, has been lied to about a pre-tribulation rapture. Um, it sells books. It, uh, it, it, it makes movies. It sells books. It's popular. Uh, the most unpopular doctrine out there is that we will endure to the end of the tribulation, and then Jesus will come and collect his elect at the end of the tribulation. But one of these, and whether they're well-intentioned and just misinformed or haven't had this their eyes opened by the Holy Spirit or not. This is another popular doctrine out there of a pre-tribulation gathering to the Lord. Um, I firmly believe that we will not be gathered together to the Lord, as 2 Thessalonians says, uh, until after the man of sin, the Antichrist, be revealed. Uh, then, and that's basically uh, the, um, I, I believe, one of the popes of Rome. But I believe that we will go through the tribulation, and that's another video for another time. I have quite a few videos on that, and I break it down for you and how I feel the Lord taught me from his word and by revelation from his spirit, not from man. But these popular doctrines out there, you have to be careful. If the world loves them, they're selling books and making movies, you have to question, did Jesus ever get this notoriety? Uh, he was hated and despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows. Paul was shipwrecked, he was beaten, he was imprisoned, and eventually beheaded. Uh, you have to weigh, what are these people preaching based on what the Word of God says from Genesis to Revelation? Too many of us sit under these preachers and teachers and books and movies and think that we can get all of our, our uh, revelation from them, that we don't have to dig into the Word ourselves or ask the Holy Spirit to, to be our only teacher. This is the danger of being distracted by a false teacher. You need to go to Christ yourself. He said he is your teacher. He will guide you into all truth, just as he promised. Now, do you believe that? Do you believe you need the Joel Austins, the Benny Hens, and the Joyce Myers, and the Pope Francis's, and all that to guide you? Or do you believe you have access to the Father through one spirit, through uh, Christ's own spirit who lives in you, and that he will teach you all things? His final concerns are, 
This author goes on to say, there is nothing wrong with being wealthy. I love it when Christians are rich. That should mean more money to fund the mission. But there is a line to how much money we as leaders should spend on ourselves. I don't know where the line is, but it is somewhere before the ministry. And he goes on and on to say uh, that there needs to be accountability. Uh, that if the Lord has blessed you, like he did Job in the end of Job's trial, if the Lord has blessed you uh, with wealth, then what are we doing uh, you know, to bless other people? Like the previous video, I talked about greed. If the Lord has blessed you with money, money itself is not the sin. It's the love of money that is the root of all evil. And these prosperity teachers want to tell you that if you're not rich, if you're not healthy, you're in sin and you're doing something wrong against the Lord. If that were the case, then Jesus must be in the worst situation ever because people despised him, tried to throw him off cliffs, called for his death uh, repeatedly, called him crazy, demon-possessed, you name it. Uh, did he live his best life now? Was he rich and famous and did the world love him? I hardly think so. So I wanted to um, um, go on to Joel Austin now, or at least he does, this author does. Okay, this uh, pastor goes on to say, like Joyce Meyer, Joel Austin has some really great things to say. He is encouraging, and the man is certainly happy. This should not be held against him. The man is confused on theology. Amen? He has much of the same doctrinal misunderstandings as Joyce Meyer. They come from the same tradition. His doctrine is difficult to discern for many because he won't talk about doctrine. He won't talk about theology. He quickly backpedals when asked hard questions as seen on that interview with Larry King. I saw that interview where Larry King asked, do you believe that Jesus is the only way? That if you don't go through Christ alone, uh, are, are you hell bound? And Joel Osteen simply could not answer that question. He danced around that question the entire show. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was given that kind of an opportunity on live television, I would pray God that I would take advantage of that and give the gospel out right there for everyone watching. And no, I wouldn't be liked for it. But Joel Osteen and a lot of others care more about their popularity with man and being liked with people than standing on the doctrine of Christ. And I want to warn you and admonish you, Scripture tells us, he who runs ahead and does not keep only to the doctrine of Christ does not have Christ. If you represent Christ, you will speak only his words to people. You will not run ahead and start your own theology and your own doctrines. It says if you do not stick to the doctrine of Christ alone, you do not have Christ I challenge you to watch a typical message. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, this backtracked here. Okay, he goes on to say, the prosperity gospel is much like all other religions in that it uses faith. It uses doing good things to leverage material blessings from God. Essentially use God to get things from God. How many want God simply for himself? Not what he has to give or what he can do, but you fall in love simply with God for his heart, for who he is. Don't any of us want to be treated that way? Joel goes on to say in one of his books, God has already done everything he's going to do. The ball is now in your court. If you want success, if you want wisdom, if you want to be prosperous and healthy, you're going to have to do more than meditate and believe. You must boldly declare words of faith and victory over yourself and your family. And this is from the book From Your Best Life Now, page 132. Joel goes on to say, if you are believing for your child to find God, go help somebody else's child to develop a relationship with God. If you're struggling financially, go out and help somebody who has less than you have. If you want to reap financial blessings, you must sow financial seeds in the lives of others. If you want to see healing and restoration come to your life, go out and help somebody else get well. And this is from your best life now. This is not the gospel. It's a false gospel. Joel teaches that we open ourselves to God to get more from God. He teaches that we use our words to speak into existence a better reality. This is heresy. And I do a lot of the um, uh, videos that uh, I do on this channel by God's leading about the papacy, uh, the Vatican, the papacy, and how uh, the New World Order, um, how all of this plays into uh, seeing uh, the book of Daniel, Revelation, come together. But I also wanted to take some time to not have us, I wanted to remind us of these other false teachers, these wolves in sheep's clothing that are out there. And, uh, you know, Joel Osteen is a big one. He is a huge offender in this area. Um, we need to examine our hearts before the Lord. If you're teaching, if you're preaching, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to convict you. Uh, if you've said something that is not doctrinally correct, and it can happen, you can be a well-intentioned teacher or pastor, and 
truly feel that what you're saying um, is the truth and then the Holy Spirit will come along and correct you, well, please make an apology to the people that you've taught or that you're speaking to and tell them that the Holy Spirit corrected you and taught you correctly. I had to do this with my children years ago. Up until four years ago, I was a pre-trib believer and taught my kids these things, believing that, um, that I'd heard correctly, not because of the scriptures, but because I'd watched all the Left Behind movies, read all the books, and listened to pastors preach at me. But the Holy Spirit convicted my heart four years ago and said, Angie, are, are your beliefs on this based on what I have taught you directly from my spirit and the scriptures, or is it based on the books and the movies and what the pastors are saying? And I had to say that how I believe was based on what was told to me through those books and movies and pastors, not sitting under the tutelage and the guidance of the Holy Spirit directly teaching me from his word. And he corrected me and I had to go back and apologize to my children for that, that I was wrong and that the Holy Spirit corrected me. You need to test everything you hear. The scriptures tell us test everything. Remember, Paul preached in Berea and the Bereans, the scripture said, were a more noble character and tested everything that Paul said by reading the scriptures themselves to see if what Paul preached was true. Let me ask you this question whenever you're evaluating a preacher or a teacher. Uh, are there, have they faced persecution? Are they noted for being persecuted because they're only sticking to the doctrine of Christ and they won't look to the right or to the left? Jesus said, if you stand for him, the world will hate you. If you stand for the world, the world will love you as its own. These prosperity gospel teachers are accepted on secular talk shows. They're praised by the world, including Pope Francis. The whole world loves him. It doesn't matter what cult you follow, what religion you follow. Pope Francis is loved by them all. And Jesus said, beware when all men think well of you, for so they did the false prophets. Again, let me reiterate that and end this video with that. Jesus himself said, beware when all men think well of you, for so they thought of the false prophets. Food for thought. Take care, everyone.